Hi class, in this video we are going to create the game layout. Now last time we set up the instruction page. What we're going to do this time is create a brand new sheet to be able to build this game layout in. So head on over to our sheet that we made and head down to the bottom where you see the plus sign to add a new sheet. Now we're going to name this player one. We're also going to create another one for player two that's identical later on. Once we have this made, the next thing we need to do is add some, add some columns to this cell and also delete some rows. So I'm going to start off by deleting the rows. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, shift click and select every cell except for the top 30. Then I'm going to right click and choose delete rows 31 through 1000. Okay, now we're going to add some rows to the column. There are two ways to do this. The first way is you can select a bunch of cells or a bunch of rows. You can copy with Ctrl or Command C and then click on the last row and paste. That works if you have nothing else in it. The more common way to do it is simply to right click on one of column and either insert to the left or insert one to the right. Now we're going to do that until we end up with a, with a column AG. Now if you notice, we have way too many, we, way too much space in there. We have to scroll side to side. So I'm going to select everything by shift clicking again and right clicking anywhere on the top and choosing resize columns. Okay, I'm going to choose 20 pixels and we're also going to right click on the column with all the rows. And we're going to resize the row height so that we have 17 pixel height. Okay. That looks about perfect. So things are looking pretty good. Now if we head over to our other sheet, we notice that column N is a little bit wider, the same as column A. So I'm going to click and stretch that out. Yeah, that's about right. And we're going to do the same thing with column A and also row 30 as well. So we'll stretch out column A. And now we'll add some height to row 30. We're going to add a similar styling to this like we did in our instruction sheet. Okay. Now I'm going to select just like we did in the last video, everything except the bottom row and merge those cells together. And I'm also going to do that with some of the cells here on the bottom for row 30. We'll select a few, merge them together and select the rest. Now you might want to set yours up differently and that's perfectly fine. What we're going to do next is to add some water texture to this. So I'm going to come over to the fill color and choose a nice water color for the blue. Now I filled everything up and everything isn't going to end up blue, but we'll fix that later. The next thing I'm going to do is add some shading to that bottom row. We'll add a nice gray, probably best to choose the same gray as we did last time, but we're just quickly doing this. Okay, I'm going to head back over to the instruction page where we put in that Creative Commons logo and copy that formula and I'm going to paste it back into that same cell. So you can copy with Command or Control C or use the menu and you can paste with Command or Control V or also use the edit menu as well. Okay, and because we're using mode two for that image, it adjusts as we stretch it. So I'm just going to stretch that cell out until it looks more or less right. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is go to the insert menu, choose drawing and add a similar logo to what we did last time. Now you can make this however you want. You can change the color. You can make it say player one for the player one sheet. I'm just going to do something very similar like we did before. I'm going to have a size that's at roughly the same as our cell. I'm going to paint it red and I'm going to add some text to it. And I'm just going to call it battle sheets like we did last time. Okay, I'm going to make that a large size. I think last time we used size 48 and that worked pretty well. And I'm going to give it a color of white. Okay, that kind of disappears, but if you click on it, you still find your rotate bar and your handlebars. So I'm going to rotate that while holding the shift key and drag it in. Okay. 
Now, for some reason, it doesn't place it correctly, so I'm just going to adjust it. I'm going to scale it and then stretch it to fit the box. In your game, you might want to adjust it so it looks a little bit better by adjusting your drawing. You can always do that by double clicking. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add some text into the bottom. And now I'm going to adjust the vertical alignment. Now, I want the vertical alignment to be centered there. In fact, I think I want the vertical alignment to be centered for the entire cell area. So I'm going to select all of that and choose that to middle. And I'm also going to align it centered horizontally as well. That'll save us some time later. Now, if you notice here over on our the goal sheet that we're trying to get to, that whole right column after Z is, is blue. We need to make that white. So I'll select all those cells and make that white. Okay, so let's spend some time duplicating what we just saw on this page. I'm going to shift click to select several cells, then merge them together and give them the name for player one. And I'm going to make that text bold as well so it stands out. The next thing we need to do is design a layout or template so the user knows what planes go where or what boats go where. Okay, so the first one's our aircraft carrier and it has five A's for aircraft carrier. So I'm going to select under those, merge it together, and type in aircraft carrier. Now that looks pretty good, except I think I would rather have that to be gray so it looks a little more like boat pieces. So I'll choose a nice gray and choose whatever one you want. And I'd also like to add some cell borders around it so it really stands out. So I'll click on my cell border and choose all border. All border will make it so each cell has borders going around all sides of it. Now we could do this for the battleship, cruiser, destroyer, and frigate. But it'd be easier to select that whole part, copy it, and just paste it down over and over again for each one of them. It's easier to edit that way, because all we need to do after that, instead of merging and realigning everything, we just have to change the name by typing in the new name. So I'm typing in Battleship here, replacing those A's with B's. But the Battleship only uses four squares. So I'm going to change that fill color back to white and then just hit delete on my keyboard to delete the text that's there. Same with the cruiser. The cruiser only uses three. So I'm going to select those last two, delete the contents, change them to white and change the letters to C and rename it to be a cruiser. Do the same thing with the destroyer. So I'll select out those out and delete them and Rename those with D's. Oh, just a second. Though Destroyer also has three. I deleted one too many. Sorry about that. Okay, so delete those. Change the color to white. And then we just need to rename that part to be D's for Destroyers. And tell it it's a Destroyer. Now we're just missing the frigate, so I'm going to copy and paste that again, Cha delete the last letter off of that, change it to white, change those two D's to F's, and rename that one to be a frigate. All right, the last thing we need to do is to define that X is our bomb. Now look what happens here when I type in the equal sign just into the cell. It gives us a problem. Excel and Google Sheets like the equal sign to be a for formulas and functions. But if you put a little tick and apostrophe in front of it, it lets you use the equal sign just as regular text. Okay, I'm going to merge a couple of those cells together so we have room to type in our text, type in bomb. And again, I am going to put a cell border around that. That layout is pretty much going to stay the same for the rest of them. So I might as well just copy what we just did and paste it in. So Google Sheets will put, save all our formatting. We're going to change that, delete the text in it. Our white box is going to be untried. Okay. Now we're going to have a black box. So I'll fill that in with black and black is going to represent the missed tiles. 
and paste one more time and we're going to have a red tile to represent the tiles where we hit somebody's boat. Okay, the last thing that we need to add is the part where our turn indicator is going to be. So I'll merge some more text together so I have some room to type. Current turn and I should make that text bold so it stands out so we can easily find whose turn it is. Now with this cell that I just merged, we're going to be putting a formula in to tell whose turn it is. So you can just put whatever text you want in there, we'll be deleting it later. Okay, that part on the right is all finished. The next thing we need to do is type in our grid area. So select those cells, select from C to M and merge those together and change the fill color to white. I'm going to add a border around this too so it stands out a little bit. Okay, type in place your ships here. All right, the next thing we need to do is to set out the grid layout. So I'm just going to select all the way down to row 14 and give that a nice dark gray color. Oops, I changed text color. There, fill color, dark gray. There, that looks pretty good. I'm going to do that the same all the way over to row M and add some fill color as well. Okay, the next thing we're going to put our letters and our numbers in. So I'm going to run 1 through 10. And uh, I can see here that I didn't quite go all the way to row M. So I'm going to have to add that into it. Recolor that. And I'm putting in my letters A through J. Now I'm going to select all of that area and I'm going to color that to be white. And we're also going to have to have a border around each one of those so that it stands out. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to add some borders around those other text. Okay. Now up at the top there, you can see that I also messed that up. The good thing is if I just merge that together, it'll fix that little problem. Okay. Now, instead of just doing the whole thing over and over and over again, because that would take forever, I'm just going to select that area. I'm going to copy it. So you can go to the edit menu and choose copy. I'm going to jump down one row from the bottom and paste it. And I'm going to do that two more times, starting an O and pasting and going down to 16 and pasting. Now all I have to do is change the text that's inside of it. So that one becomes your attacks. The next one becomes drop a bomb with X. And the last one is for your hits and misses. And with that, we've fully formatted our game page. Now player twos is going to be identical to this. So what we can do is come down to the player one tab, right click on it and choose duplicate. This makes an identical copy of that sheet. We'll rename that player two by double clicking. We can rename things and we'll head on to it. Then we'll just change the player one text to reflect player two. And that's it.